this is Michael, Michael Ratcliffe, and this is just an updated version of the EC meter. So what we've done here, we've added an LCD screen with buttons and a graphical user interface. We now save the calibration values into EEPROM so it'll survive restarting it. And we've added support for, we had support for the American plug, now we've got support for the European plug as well. So just, you wire it up like on the diagram that's on the screen now. I remember these projects are at your own risk. I, all the codes released under GNU, if you're watching this on YouTube, just click below the video and there'll be a link to where the code's hosted. Anyway, now you're back. The way it works is, it measures the EC and PPM, the nutrient strength of water by measuring the resistance between these two pins on either the American or the European plug. Now because you never want to plug, this goes to the analogue pin as you can see, you never want to plug this into the wall. So if you're in America, I recommend using the European plug. If you're in Europe, I recommend using the American plug, just so you've got enough sockets you can plug it into and there's less chance of a mistake. Now let's have a look at what we've got here. If you, want to if you want to calculate, uh, see any other stuff, uh, follow the link to the original blog where we talk about the theory about how it works. What we've got, we've got tap water, my uh, middle strength um, nutrient solution and a high strength. The EC is just a number to say, it's electrical conductivity. Pretty much if you're growing in aquaponics, this is the maximum range you're ever going to see. So let's talk about the the probe. What's it got? It's got a waterproof temperature sensor wired up to the digital pins. It's got a voltage divider and a figure of eight gland on. So when you get these plugs, you want an American two prong on one side or the European two prong and a figure of eight on the other. So we can quickly plug in probes like that. Because if these were out, we won't quickly be able to take them out and replace them. The LCD shield is just a generic LCD shield with buttons. You need the one with buttons, it just pops off and on like that. Very easy. Uh, very cheap as well, just a, I think $3 on eBay will get you one. So we've, let's pop it into the middle one. These values are calculated using this commercial TDS meter. Um, it, it's not been calibrated in a while, but it gives a good indication of what values we should expect. So take your power and plug it into your Arduino. And the startup routine should be like that. It tells you what it's doing, how to calibrate it, and how to navigate. So let's drop the temperature probe in there. And the EC probe. Now this is saying 1.57 as you can see. It's 1.62, so it's pretty close. The next one, it should change to 3.0. give it a bit of time to settle the temperature. 3.01. Almost bob on. And this one to the far left, we're just putting it in, should be 0 0.5 ish. Well, 0 0.47, 0 0.52. It's not too far off. So, as you can see, it, it, it does work quite well. Now, we've also programmed the calibration value to be stored in the EEPROM. So, if you power this off and power it back on, it'll still be calibrated, which is quite useful. Let's just run through what options are. If you click up, it tell, the first reading it will tell you the PPM, the minimum EC it's read and the maximum, minimum and maximum temperature, an uptime counter so you know if that data is relevant and these are the factors so that's your PPM conversion factor, that's I think Australian one, this is your calibration factor for the probe 2.8 which is very similar to the other American style plug I got so it can which I cut the end off. So this is, you can say that they're pretty similar. 
and this is the temperature coefficient. You can stick with these two as standard and this one's the one you're going to change. So what's the K value there? K value is 2.8. Just to check that this value gets stored in EEPROM, we'll write it down here, 2.8. Now let's try with the American probe. So just unplug with the European probe, sorry. So let's unplug the American plug and move it over there. Now we're going to plug the American plug in and calibrate it in this one because it's a, you want to calibrate it in the middle value you expect to see. So when you started this up, when we started this up it said uh, hold select to calibrate. So we'll, we'll hold the select button. We'll hold the select button once I get the camera to steady. Set calibration, so we press up and down, we're calibrating it in 1.6. So we just keep pressing up until it equals 1.6, 1.62. And then we click right to calibrate. So it's saying it's calibrating, this will take 60 seconds, so I'm going to cut the video and make it come back on in 60 seconds. Right, so it's calibrated, so it's telling us good result. The new K value is one point, cell constant's 1.76 because it's a completely different probe. Uh, good results, select to save, so we press select. And it's saved the calibration as 1.76. So let's just note that down. The new K is equal to 1.76. And click back down to get to EC. So what's it saying? The EC is 1.64. It should be because we calibrated. Let's try the 0 0.47. 0 0.53. So as you can see it's pretty close. And let's try it in the solution of 3. This should cut. That value now should change to 3. Which it has. So once it calibrates it runs quite well. Now let's check, let's just double check the EEPROM thing is working. We'll press the reset, main reset button on the Arduino board. If it works, we'll just unpower it and power it back on. Let's so run right up to the top. The K value is 1.76. We put it in as, and because we're saving an EEPROM as an int, it times by a constant. It, it's lost a bit of finger. So this is the actual con uh, cell constant, but it thinks that it's 1.74, which is a very small difference. So it, the, we know the EEPROM saving is working. Um, you're just going to have to believe me that the uptime counter works because. I've not got time to make a video just watching the uptime counter climb. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. So now you've got two probes you can choose from. Um, an Arduino which saves the calibration value. And in the next tutorial we'll be making a self-learning nutrient doser from this so that means you'll have a self dose uh, self learning nutrient doser for your hydroponics unit for around $15 which is much cheaper than the commercial unit watch the next video